This video contains graphic content. You have been warned. This man jumped into a few inches of lava. It's something that isn't well documented. A lot of speculation goes into figuring out what exactly would happen if a human jumped into molten rock. I'd like to say up front that this is an area of special interest to me. I have a minor in geology and study geophysical phenomena on a daily basis. That being said, what you're about to hear is speculation. The data from which these conclusions will be derived are facts, but we have virtually no hands-on proof of what exactly would happen. What would happen if this dude did this in real life? Let's break down the scene. For context, this movie is called Volcano and stars Tommy Lee Jones and Anne Hesch. A fissure under Los Angeles after a series of earthquakes results in a small volcanic eruption, almost completely magmatic, very little pyroclastic material reaches the surface. Composition suggests that the lava itself is extremely mafic, reliant on heavy elements, namely iron and magnesium. These elements have high melting points but yield relatively non-viscous flows like these here. In contrast, siliceous lava, also known as felsic lava, is high in compounds such as silicon dioxide and has a much higher viscosity. Fun fact, the two most common elements in the Earth's crust are oxygen and silicon, so silicon dioxide kind of makes sense. It's typically not as hot either. As a general rule of thumb, the hotter the liquid is, the faster it will flow. So this lava is, without a doubt, very mafic and very hot. By my estimation, it's around 1000 degrees Celsius, that's about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. The lava in this scene is also traveling down a subway tunnel, which traps and recycles a good deal of the heat. This character here, played by John Carroll Lynch, has to make his way through a subway car while 1000 degree lava moves one foot underneath the metal floorboard. This is an inaccuracy in itself. The air in the car would certainly boil his lungs and likely set his clothes on fire. Cotton will self-ignite at around 400 degrees. I'll be speaking in terms of Celsius from now on. By the way, here, the rubber in his shoes would almost immediately liquefy. Devulcanization isn't the only process that would be taking place. A geologist on OSU's website reported that radiant heat from Aa lava, that's very cool siliceous lava, could be felt from his helicopter some 400 meters above the flow. Needless to say, the entire scene you're about to see would be impossible to play out in real life. The subway tunnel would be baking several hundred degrees above maximum oven temperatures thanks to its insulating properties. So John Carroll Lynch's character miraculously makes it to the edge of the train car carrying this 300 pound dude, it's Manny from George Lopez by the way, and faces a new hurdle. I mean literally this dude's gotta jump some 8 or so feet. If you ask me, the guy he's carrying is already dead. Toss him in and use him as a stepping stone. But no, of course, this character is a hero, and as LA's Metropolitan Transportation Chair, feels responsible for allowing the subway to run in the first place. He takes a grand leap and makes it about halfway. The first thing you'll notice about his jump is that his clothes immediately catch fire. If we assume the train car wasn't an oven in the first place, then this here is accurate. Temperatures some 10 feet above lava can still simmer at or near the melting points of some heavy metals. If this guy simply inhales, his lungs will collapse and liquefy. Now here comes the weird part, physical properties of lava apart from heat. Remember, this is rock we're talking about, and even with this relatively low viscosity at play, it's still much denser than water and incredibly viscous by comparison. Stepping into it, in this case about a foot deep, would feel a bit like stepping into wet concrete in terms of consistency. You'll be able to walk around in it, temperature aside, but you'd have very heavy feet, and you'd feel as strained as you would walking in thick sand. With temperature considered, however, consistency wouldn't matter. You wouldn't have much time to notice it. Your skin would char and melt for sure, but would last long enough to keep you from exploding on account of the water composition inside of you. This video here has been played time and time again to depict what would happen if a human jumped into a pool of lava, and this is accurate, but not much has been detailed in regard to jumping into a shallow flow of it. There are actually accounts of geologists in Hawaii falling into shallow flows of lava and being able to escape. So that's just it. They of course had severe burns, but they were able to escape. They were able to lift themselves out of the lava. They didn't instantly explode on account of all the water inside of them. Our skin, while relatively permeable, is an incredible shield in many aspects. On a side note, see this video here for a detailed description of what would happen if a human was suddenly exposed to outer space. The last part of this description then should focus on the slow melting of John Carroll Lynch's character. 
This would not happen. First off, he'd most certainly fall over, let's be real. The natural tendency of a human in pain is to curl over, so he'd probably fall face first, killing him instantly. But even if we assume he manages to stay upright, the next thing that'd kill him is toxic gas, specifically carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. CO2 will kill you slowly, SO2 will kill you faster, and H2S will kill you immediately. This one's actually a huge concern in my field, petroleum engineering. If we assume that the gases don't kill him, then the surefire cause would clearly be via melting. Nope, just kidding. The movie depicts him dying here when the lava reaches his heart, when in reality all of the water in his body would have already evaporated. I'm not entirely sure which would have happened first, but I do believe the water in his body would evaporate faster than the skin and muscle tissue wrapping his bones, even though these admittedly are also filled with water. So yes, he would have died via dehydration, that's rapid boiling of water inside of him, and shriveled up like a raisin before his solids had time to melt, believe it or not. That is some strange science. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. This is Salazar Studio, thanks for learning with us.